don't like the Commonwealth because the Commonwealth is the old British Empire. It's called the Commonwealth because Britain stole all those countries' wealth and then went, come on. <laughs> the whole empire was founded on cocaine. Everybody was on cocaine. The remedies had cocaine in them. Queen Victoria was on cocaine. And not the shit you take. <laughs> You've never done a line and gone, let's invade India. Hi guys, welcome to the channel, you know, or welcome back to the channel. Of course, if you've been here before, we're going to continue on doing comedy. Right now, we're going to do stand-up comedy, Frankie Boyle. It doesn't say, but I think it's from the Apollo. We, I don't know if I've done, I think I've done only a mock of the week clip with him in it. Uh, to be honest, you know, at first, I, I think I had some trouble understanding him. I think I'm, I'm better at it now. <laughs> I had much more practice with with these accents, you know. I've gotten numerous requests for, for him, and I keep wanting to do it, so we're going to do some. Well, you know, if you like the video, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on your notifications, and pass the video around. So, that being said, let's watch. Hello and welcome to Live at the Apollo. I'm quite surprised that they've let me on as well, if that's any comfort. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lovely theater. I've got two fantastic comedians to introduce to you tonight. I've got a lovely audience to talk to. I looked right into your eyes when I said that, mate. How you doing? You have made an effort there, haven't you, man? You have made an effort with a PK Blinders hairstyle there. <laughs> and it's like putting 26 inch rims on a wheelie bin. <laughs> We've got some famous celebrities to talk to tonight, some not so famous. Some of the celebrities here tonight, when I was researching the show, I had to start their Wikipedia page. <laughs> There are celebrities in here who don't get asked to turn on the Christmas lights in their own house. <laughs> You're talking about people who are 18 months away from being quite a tricky tiebreaker in a pub quiz. <laughs> I'm only kidding, we've got some uh, famous faces in. Who have we got? We've got Jamila. Jamil, how you doing, Jamila? You alright? It's exciting for me because you present the Radio One chart show. You get to tell the nation what is number one every week. And the only way that that could be more exciting, I think, would be if it was 20 years ago when anybody gave a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have we got? We've got people from Holby, haven't we? We've got Hugh Corsi, where's Hugh? Hugh, how you doing? You're a fantastic actor. You've been in the RSC and everything. But you've been in Holby for a long time, right? So I have a theory that if someone had a heart attack over here, we could whisk you over and just suck all of the drama out of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> we had the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow this year. A great choice of venue. A place where people think that hepatitis B is a vitamin. <laughs> really trust these big sporting occasions, you know, the Olympics, a lot of that stuff is just for rich people. Dressage, yachting, I don't remember that at school. <laughs> yachting tomorrow class, so remember, bring in your boats. <laughs> a lot of people find the Paralympics inspiring, I just find it depressing. I can't throw a discus and I've got arms. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar Pistorius. Pistorius to me sounds like a spell that Harry Potter would say to make your legs drop off. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets out of jail, his next girlfriend is going to get ready in a hurry. <laughs> I thought you were running a bath. No, I just threw some dungarees on. Let's go. <laughs> I hope a jail bully steals his legs, walks about being nine foot six. <laughs> I don't like the Commonwealth, because the Commonwealth is the old British Empire. It's 
It's called the Commonwealth because Britain stole all those countries' wealth and then went, come on. <laughs> the whole empire was founded on cocaine. Everybody was on cocaine. The remedies had cocaine in them. Queen Victoria was on cocaine. And not the shit you take. <laughs> You've never done a line and gone, let's invade India. We had the referendum up in Scotland that was won by the No campaign and Alistair Darling. I thought it'd be good if when he won, Alistair Darling's eyebrows had finally turned into butterflies. <laughs> and he wasn't even able to look surprised about it. <laughs> David Beckham sent the people of Scotland an open letter. An open letter because he couldn't work out how to get it into the envelope. <laughs> People said during the campaign that I was anti-English. I couldn't be more pro-English. I thought the best thing for independence would have been if England had won the World Cup. Because you would have been so unbearable that we would have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happens next, I think it's important that Scotland does something that puts England on the back foot, something that England won't expect. And the last thing that you're expecting is for us to form an Islamic Caliphate. <laughs> ah yes, independent Scotland, we can do this. Okay, we'll have to learn how to treat women slightly better, but we can change. <laughs> I think people don't understand enough about international politics, do they? In Scotland, people think that NATO is just a nickname you give to a guy who lost a foot to diabetes. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> Ed Miliband came up for the referendum. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I don't think Ed Miliband will win the election. Because if he can't persuade his own face to do what he tells it to, <laughs> Miliband said he wanted to militarise the Scottish border. Can you imagine being a Scottish border guard, having to do cavity searches just to keep your hands warm? <laughs> Holding back the English refugees at Newcastle. Newcastle being the first city in history that turned into a refugee camp and got less mental. <laughs> oh, things are actually a lot more civilised now that we're ruled over by a horse militia. <laughs> Do you know what people in Scotland want? What they really want, in my experience, is they want transport to run normally in the winter through three feet of snow. That's all they ever moan about. Why isn't this train moving through the snow? <laughs> but what you really want is for the pilot to come over the intercom and go, well, I've been told that it's not safe to take off, but I thought, let's give it a go. <laughs> Yeah, we live in a go. kind of porn culture now, don't we? You see that thing on porn search engines where it goes, make this your homepage. Who does that? <laughs> Who wakes up in the morning, switches their computer on, is confronted with hardcore pornography and thinks, I'm home. <laughs> Animals don't watch porn, do they? Unless you include my cat. it's led to, it's led to men not really understanding what sex is like for women anymore. I often think it must be more intense to let someone inside your body. I feel awkward just letting the gas man in the hallway. <laughs> I feel awkward just talking about sex because I'm so old and disgusting. I have a body like a dropped lasagna. I'm 42 and I now ejaculate with all the force of Mary Berry's icing paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what that is, but it sounded funny. I honestly funny. think I'm so old that I couldn't even be viewed sexually anymore. I think if I walked down the street with my hand down the front of my trousers, people would just assume that I was rummaging for a dropped toffee. <laughs> <laughs> if you get offended by any jokes tonight, by the way, feel free to tweet your outrage on a mobile phone made by a 10-year-old in China. 
Because that's what Santa Claus does the other 364 days a year. He travels around the world apologising to all the children who actually make the presents. <laughs> Sorry about that, Wolling Ho. Still, tea break's over. Back to work, son. <laughs> People say that Steve Jobs died too soon. But I think it was a fitting metaphor for his company's attitude to battery life. <laughs> <laughs> That they buried him in a coffin with a great big crack on the lid. <laughs> Twitter's good though, isn't it? Enjoy Twitter. Before Twitter came along, if I wanted to be called a wanker by a stranger, I had to go out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what gets me on Twitter? Those wee biogs people have, where they put the most banal, depressing summations of themselves. Tea drinker. That's me in a nutshell. I like to drink a cup of tea. <laughs> Foodie, I eat food. I want a burst of honesty in one of those boxes. I was brought up in an atmosphere of such violence that I could never truly love anyone. <laughs> the only person who loved me, I rejected. And during my ensuing mental breakdown, I got a nutcase pregnant. <laughs> I also drink tea. <laughs> I'd never even understood that Twitter was a bird metaphor, even though it's got a bird as the icon, and they're called tweets. And I think the reason I'd never worked that out is I've never gone to the park and had a little robin redbreast turn round in its nest and tell me that it hopes that my kids die because I made a joke about Michael Schumacher. <laughs> it's actually a very gentle joke about Michael Schumacher. I mean, thank God he's better and everything, but at the time I tweeted, the only hope for Michael Schumacher is if his brain is repaired overnight by elves. So it's actually a very light-hearted elves in the shoemaker joke. <laughs> <laughs> you can't please all of the people all of the time, can you? <laughs> Some people just get offended by a word. They don't have a word in a joke. No, ban that word. I can train a dog to get angry at a word. Rover, Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> people should be more sophisticated. Different words mean different things to different people. You say Snapchat, I say speed wank. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a thing called phenomenology. Phenomenology means that the joke can't take place in my mouth, if you think about it. It has to take place in your head. So it's often better in your head, because you add to it. I had this a couple of weeks ago. I helped an old guy across the road in Glasgow. He went to me. Help me across the road, son. I've got AIDS in both ears. <laughs> <laughs> Read a thing, said a woman died after drinking 18 litres of Coke. She ate a packet of Mentos and they found her head three miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Piers Morgan says that women send him knickers through the post. Presumably with the message from one twat to another. <laughs> I don't really understand TV, to be honest. I don't understand why Ant and Dec go to the jungle every year when it's the only place that's hot enough for Ant's head to hatch. <laughs> I don't understand why Alan Sugar looks like he's been cleaned out of someone's belly button. <laughs> I'd love to see how big Alan Sugar was if you ironed him. There's a thing that happens to you, I think, in your 40s as a man, where you suddenly realize that you're a dad, and not in a good way. You realize that you're a 42-year-old father of two who says lame dad stuff, and you will never be cool again. And this happened to me last week. I was in Covent Garden, and I was trying to cross the road at the traffic lights. There was a guy beside me, a beautiful male model, a Californian guy, a beautiful man. Because he was American, he was looking the wrong way into traffic. And he stepped out in front of a moving car. And I grabbed him by the arm and pulled him back onto the pavement. And he had no idea how close he'd come to dying. And he said, what was that car's problem? And I went, look both ways, Zoolander! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my 
kids got me for Father's Day. They got me that shower gel, mint tea tree gel. No one had warned me about that. <laughs> I thought my arsehole was going to burst into song. <laughs> They always say, don't they, when you're telling your kids off, stay positive, don't be too negative. And I agree with that. But sometimes you're standing there thinking, I don't see anything positive about this. You have shat on my rug. <laughs> and I am struggling to find an upside. You can't hit your kids, obviously, but there's nothing that says that you can't tamper with the brakes on their heelys. <laughs> My son's six now, so it's actually quite difficult to punish him. What I do is I tuck his bedclothes in really, really tight and hope that he has a nightmare where he's trapped in a giant's pocket. <laughs> I think it's sad when people medicate their children for behavioural problems, when it's so much easier to just drug yourself. <laughs> do you know the saddest thing? You spend the first year teaching them to say, Dad, say Dad, Daddy, Dada. And now they're like, Dad! And I'm like, shut up, will you? I'm on Tinder trying to find us a new mum. <laughs> We're bombing Iraq now. We're calling it humanitarian bombing. There's no such thing as humanitarian bombing, is there? It's always about oil or power, not humanitarianism. That's why you never get stopped by someone in the street saying, hi, I'm from Oxfam, and for just 12 pounds a month, we could really blow the shit out of something. <laughs> and who are we blowing up? Ah, yes. Remember last year they said, oh, we need to bomb Syria, help the rebels, they're the good guys. Who are the rebels? Ah, yes, the same people. They've gone from being loved to hated and despised in a year, and they haven't even had to win the X Factor to make that happen. <laughs> Britain as a culture runs on hypocrisy. David Cameron went to Sri Lanka. He told the Sri Lankans off for human rights abuses that they committed with weapons that Britain sold to them. Like Ronald McDonald calling you a fat bastard. <laughs> we sent Prince Harry to Afghanistan because when you want to teach people about democracy, you send them a prince. You teach them about peace and democracy by having a prince shoot at them from a helicopter. <laughs> okay, so that was stand-up comedy Frankie Boyle at the Apollo. Uh, it was pretty funny, you know, I, pretty, I think I caught on pretty good. A couple of things. I didn't get, but mostly just references. You know, I didn't know who people were. But uh, it was pretty funny. <laughs> I'll have to watch some more of his stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, you know, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a nice day.